In this video, traders, we're going to look at how do you pick the best market to trade. Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. Right, so picking a market to trade can be challenging and it can actually be something that once you start to go down that path, it's very hard often to kind of go off that path. Now, that should always be the case that you're always looking to kind of adjust and adapt, but sometimes people go down the path they kind of lose the money, they struggle with trading and they never really get any traction and they kind of just don't bother with trading again. So even though you can obviously switch path and choose markets and choose direction, choose style strategy, et cetera, and switch at any point in time, very often it's quite an interesting and an important decision to get right early on. So this video guys is sponsored by Core Spreads Australia. There's a link to them in the description below. Go and check them out if you haven't yet. If you're in the market, for a new broker, or if you're considering a backup broker, a secondary broker for certain things that's got tight spreads, that's got a decent platform, and then hit the link in the description below and go and check them out, the Core Trader 2 platform. It's a good, simple execution venue. All right, so how do we pick the market? So we need to ask ourselves a few questions, really. And then afterwards, we've got a little bit of flexibility, but it's important to at least get the main things right, because the biggest mistakes that our traders make is they say, oh, I'm going to trade, you know, I'm going to trade the DAX or the Open, but I'm taking the kids to school at uh, kind of half past eight, well, or quarter past eight, uh, well, you've only really got 15 minutes. Is that really going to happen in the real world when you're running around getting coats and shoes and packed lunches or whatever it is? Are you really going to be able to trade the DAX? No. So there's a fundamental kind of just literally a filtering process that we've got to start out with first of all. So the first thing is, where do you live? Okay, so if you live, let's say in Europe, are you really going to be up at early hours of the morning trading the Asia session open? Are you really going to want to trade the Nikkei open at silly hours in the morning? Probably not. Now, maybe you are. Maybe again, if you work out what kind of hours you work, etc., maybe that suits you and vice versa. The good thing about uh, you know various time zones and the fact that we have got opportunity, you know, we've got some decent movements in Asia pack. We've got some decent uh, kind of indices over there that we can trade. We've got obviously good US indices and we've got European indices. So we have have something in various time zones. We also have the currencies that trade obviously 24-5 and if you're trading something like yen or AUD, much more volatile in those kind of hours. If you're trading things like GBP Euro, European session, uh, CAD and uh, USD, poor USD at the end there, CAD and USD uh, trading in the American session of course. So we've got opportunity. So we need to ask ourselves where do you live? And then we need to ask the other question, obvious question of uh, when can you actually trade and that's just simply building it around your lifestyle do you work from eight till seven effectively do you work from this and that have you got commitments here and there and then saying right well this is what i have now what can i do and now you can say right well maybe if i'm back by seven can i be prepared and the screen by half seven to trade the last one and a half hours of the day maybe setting up some swing trading opportunities in the u.s markets ready for or, and I can place the trades, I can put my orders in ready for multiple days, or maybe I am gonna to be too late, so perhaps I wanna do my research and leave my orders in the market to trade the UK session or the German stocks or the DAX or whatever. Again, it's understanding your lifestyle and packaging the trades around it. So where you live in your lifestyle, very simple questions to start off with. And then what time frame do you like to trade? Now this you might not know, but you need to kind of think about it and go, well, are you a swing trader? Are you a day trader? Do you like to scalp the markets, be in and out, done for the day, and forget about what's going on? Or do you like to think more about your positions, be more calm, wait for those to mature over several days, several weeks? That is gonna have an influence because you might not want to uh, have to have the gap issue that comes with stocks. If you're holding a stock overnight, you basically relinquish any control over the risk. A currency pair from Monday to Friday, you can close it. 24 hours a day they trade, so at any time you can get stopped or you can get a limit filled. Obviously you've got the weekend gap, so that's something to consider. You know, how are you going to trade? Are you going to scalp? In which case, it doesn't matter about the gaps. Uh, what do you want? Do you want a volatile market if you're going to scalp? Uh, do you want something slower, something that's trending? Again, you're kind of going down this rabbit hole of understanding what you're trying to achieve. The other thing is, what style of trader are you? So, are you someone who likes to uh, buy trends? So, this is something that I think you've got a natural tendency for. Now, as traders, we start to nurture talents that maybe we're mean reversing or we're kind of momentum ignition or, or trend trading. Uh, and we kind of 
you know, try to adapt to all conditions, but we generally got a feel and an affinity for one specific style. So many traders like to be contrarian. They like to look for highs. They like to look for lows. They like to fade those extreme moves. And many traders like to jump on trends. They like to wait for trends and jump on the trend. So working out what type of, type of trader you are will influence the market you're trading. Because if a market you're trading is just sitting there, it's stagnating, it's not doing anything, it's very difficult to get a grip, it's just pointless. Whereas if you're you're in tune with a market that's actually in the conditions you like to trade, hey, it's kind of swinging around, I'm able to kind of job trades around, or it's trending nicely, I'm able to just, you know, bid higher and higher and wait for my pullback to get hit. Whatever suits you, it's picking the market that really resonates with you for that uh, kind of question. The final thing is, it's a bit of an interesting one, this. Do you have any experience that could influence the decision? So the obvious uh, kind of answer to this is, well, have you had any trading experience in that certain uh, market? So maybe you've been trading this before and you have some kind of data or something that says, hey, you know what? I'm quite good at trading crude oil. I had a spell on it years ago and it worked very well or whatever. So that's the obvious one. The other one is, Maybe you have industry experience or some more experience that allows you to trade with a little bit more of an edge. What do I mean by this? So let's say, for example, you used to work in soybean processing, okay? Admittedly, I'm sure there's not many soybean processors watching this video, but you get the idea. We could talk about people who are working and very intimately understand UK retail, very intimately understand telecoms. Now, is that going to rem remarkably affect your trading? No, but if your style, let's say, is a swing trader based on understanding earnings potential based on understanding seasonalities, based on understanding some of the intricacies, then that at least might help you understand a little bit more what it means when we're getting certain things. So when the crush spread, if we go back to the soybean example, is at X, or when you have the crack spread for crude oil, or a UK retailer is saying this, you have an intimate understanding of how these things are cyclical and how potentially you can then leverage that into your technical analysis and say, well, you know what? Potentially, we might have a, a poor summer because of this, this, and this. And historically, when I was working in the retail industry, blah, 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 you get the idea. So unlikely for most people, but worth thinking about. You know, do you have some sort of experience that may help you? Now, this is definitely not gonna guarantee success, of course not, uh, far from it, but it might just help you understand things a little bit more, and maybe you get a bit more enjoyment from trading things that you're more familiar with uh, as well. All right, guys, so those are some of the things, questions you can ask yourself to pick a market to trade. Do check out our channel sponsor. They are sponsoring this video. It's Course Spreads Australia. I'll link to them in the description below. Take care, bye-bye.